So it's Friday, it's Friday night, and we figured what better thing to do than go over a three-year projection, because this is what I spent hours today doing for Manoa Chocolate, and then I made one for you guys. So now, this may be the most boring episode for anyone who's not into this, but what we did is we polled you guys and asked what you were interested in the most. And the majority said you wanted more information on the business of chocolate. And this is very, it's very detailed into craft chocolate. So we, we felt that this was a, an, a very helpful tool in order to make sure that everybody starts off on the right foot because this is what, like I said before, something I really wish I would have paid attention to more or had somebody teach me and say, no, 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 you really gotta have one of these right from the beginning because it'll help you make a good decision on the big picture of your company. And so this is called Cookie Monster Chocolate Company. And what you need is a ruler. You want the side that you can't see any numbers on because we're going to go line item by line item and figure out what percentage points you're gonna to wanna to see. And so, without further ado, let's look at 2020, because it's been one hell of a year, and we're going to break it down, mostly focused on what Manoa Chocolate has done. It's not our numbers. I chose a million dollars gross sales because that's a very easy target, and then we projected out 40% growth per year by total revenues. So. What we did is we looked at retail, and as a line item, retail, we said is 45% of our gross sales. So the amount of money that we brought in, 45% of it is coming from retail, which is generally your better margin because you keep more of the money. As soon as you go to wholesale, which is one line down, usually what you would do is you would sell it to the wholesaler. In this case, let's use the, an example of Whole Foods we sold to Whole Foods at 50% off because they're gonna mark it up 100%. So they're gonna double it, but we're taking off half the value. So for easy numbers, we sell it to Whole Foods for $5, they sell it for 10, right? So hopefully there's enough margin in you wholesaling that it's still worth it. We're saying that 40% of our total sales, gross sales, is selling to wholesalers in this case, in Hawaii. And so the way Manoa Chocolate works is we keep all of our wholesale in Hawaii managed by Manoa Chocolate because it's easy. Outside of Hawaii, if we sell to the mainland, the contiguous United States, we then sell to a distributor who then sells to the rest of the United States because it's very difficult for us to send small packages to every single small account as well as manage all the administration that accompanies it. So we pass that off and that would be the next line item down is distribution. And so 7% of our gross sales is distribution. So because we chose the number $1 million gross sales, we have 450,000, we have 400,000 and we have $70,000 is coming from distribution. Now distribution is also your smallest margin. So if you sold it, if you like to retail your bars for 10, you want to wholesale your bars for five. You're going to sell your bars distribution for somewhere between 350 and four. That way everything is there for everyone to get their profit margin for things to work properly. That's just the way that this business works for chocolate. Other industries have different margins. Chocolate tends to work this way. We have then online sales. And this is something we're pushing hard this year because it's 2020 and we don't have a lot of people walking through our doors. So we're pushing online. At the moment, what we're saying for this Cookie Monster Chocolate Company, 6% of our gross sales, which is $60,000 for the entire year, is coming from online sales. We then do chocolate factory tours and anybody with a chocolate factory, it's worth doing tours for a lot of reasons. You don't have to charge a lot for it. The lucky and fortunate thing about chocolate factory tours is you also get the retail sales at the end of the tour and a lifelong customer if you did a good job and they believed and related to what you did. So that gives a total revenue of $1 million and that's 100% of what you're about to work with. 
Now we get into our expenses. That was all the revenues. So we're going to first go into our cost of goods sold. You'll often hear this called COGS. Cost of raw materials. Now this is important. This, I have 11% here. 11% is not a bad number for your cost of goods sold, but you want it to try and be 10 or less. Now we have, because 11% of a million dollars is $110,000. As you grow, it becomes a lot easier for your cost of raw materials to come down in price because you're buying larger quantities. You get the same product, but at a better price because you bought a container of beans instead of a bag. And a pallet of butter, cocoa butter, instead of one box. So things improve a lot when you start to hit economies of scale. Um, so. Now, uh, just to dive a little deeper, cost of goods sold, cost of raw materials in this case refers to beans, cacao seeds, cocoa butter, sugar, milk powder, whatever it took to go into making that actual bar of chocolate. We've then broken other costs of sales like packaging into a different line item. So now we've got cost of goods for retail. So the reason we have this line item is because Manoa Chocolate has a retail front. That's why we have this retail side here, because we sell not only our own chocolate, but we also sell honey, and we sell Hawaiian sea salts, and we sell Hawaiian coffee. And so we have to purchase items in order to retail them. So we then buy it at a wholesale price, just like Whole Foods, and then mark it up and retail it. Now we have cost of packaging. Packaging, see, and all these numbers that you're looking at here, this is somewhat representative of what they should be and what your targets should be. And so we want to improve on these numbers. I rounded off on everything and chose an easy starting point for, for the total revenue. But packaging costs tend to be what your raw material costs are. As much as we'd like to say we're in the chocolate making business, we're also in the packaging business. We need so much packaging, boxes of boxes. In fact, we have a storage room that's from floor, floor, floor to ceiling of nothing but packaging. It's insane how much packaging. And this is also where you start to save because if you can buy 100,000 packages at a time, your unit cost on each package comes down a lot. So this is a game. Remember, this is a game. You gotta play it if you wanna grow and things get better when you get a little bigger and you're gonna see this as we project from 2020 to 2022 here. Now, cost of direct labor. What this means is the cost of the labor that's actually making that chocolate bar. We're ignoring all the administration costs. We're ignoring the costs of, say, the, the sales, the people on the retail front. So cost of direct labor, in this case, is the cost in order to make, and in some cases, sell the bar. It depends on how you categorize it. In this case, we in Manoa Chocolate don't have our administration costs built into this. That's further down in the cost of operations, operating costs. So we have 25%. That's high. That's too high. You want to drop that. It's going to affect your bottom line to the point where you're not going to make any money and you're going to see. So now, payroll. Nothing you can do about this. Freight. Freight is reflective of how much you're shipping. Freight in, in this case, is you, you need to ship product in. There's no way around it. As you grow, it's also gonna grow. Freight out. As you sell chocolate on your online business, it's going out. There's nothing you can do about that. You're gonna have expenses incurred. You can try and get the best rate you can with FedEx, USPS, UPS, doesn't matter. You're shipping chocolate out. Hopefully it shows up and it's not melted. <laughs> uh, section 263. I'm always confused on this, but it's some type of inventory adjustment that accountants do to accurately reflect what's going on in your business. And I mostly just ignore it because it's the accountant's world and I don't really care. Cost of goods sold. So our cost of goods sold is 53%. $530,000 of our expenses of that 1 million went into cost of goods sold. That's high. We need to get that way down but this is an example and you're gonna understand better after. So our gross profit is our total revenues minus cost of goods sold. These are your flexible 
costs, the costs that you have somewhat a control over, because what we're about to enter are our fixed costs, and you don't really have much leeway there. It's a lot of expenses that are really small that add up to a very large percentage. So if you're gonna save money, it's right here. It's the easiest place to do it in your cost of goods sold. So now, let's turn the page. We're gonna go into our operating expenses. <laughs> okay, salary. In this case, this would be somebody like me as the owner. At this point, I have it at 4%, $40,000 a year. This is a touchy area because as the owner, you don't want to pay yourself a lot of money because you want it to go back into the business. I often feel like I'm injecting my soul into the company, which is what it feeds off of when it's young and fragile and needs to expand. It feeds on your energy and you don't want to take much from it and the money is the energy that the company also has. So you have to be super careful to leave as much as possible in there because you never know what's gonna happen and you're gonna need some cushion. Now in this case, this is fine. For a company doing a million dollars of gross sales a year, $40,000 is fine. You don't wanna take too much more. In fact, I was taking 36 for a long, long time until the company hit a point where the accountant said, Dylan, if you don't take more money, you're gonna be red flagged by the IRS. And so that's when I started to take more just to stay off of their radar. It's something I don't wanna deal with, it's not fun. In this case, this is pretty normal. That's something that's okay and that's 4% and that's once again 4% of that $1 million. Admin, you can't do it alone. There's so much administration ex um, efforts that need to be involved at a certain point when you're doing a million dollars because there's wholesale orders that are starting to grow. Like we were doing, okay, $400,000 of wholesale and $70,000 of distribution and X number online. That takes a lot of time on a computer for someone to manage that to make sure everything works okay. There's somebody seeing everything going in and somebody that sees everything going out. That's a general management, a GM, um, role and I played that for a while we now have one and she does a very good job at making sure that everything that comes in goes out and that we do what we say and so now that's the admin salary at this point we're choosing 3.5 percent just because 35 36 thousand dollars for a company doing a million dollars it's maybe a little low for that that role that's what we're using for this chart <laughs> now this is the, all these expenses, you, you have a little flexibility with the salary and the admin salary. You don't have much for the rest of everything because no matter what, you're gonna have to pay your payroll taxes. Oh, I'm gonna cross that out because I have it right here. You're gonna have to pay general excise tax. You're gonna have to do professional services. And what professional services are, are your accountant's fees. They're not gonna do it for free. They have a lot of work involved in filing your taxes and making sure that you are up to date. And outside services, what this would be is you need somebody to plumb your sink. You need some, a contractor to come in and build a wall. You need an electrician to come in and wire a machine. That's outside services. And so we got that at 2%. We have office supplies. You have to buy computer paper. You're gonna have to buy, oh, there's so many office supplies, Amazon expenses that we utilize all the time to just show up to our doorstep. And so that, um, okay, supplies, other supplies, that could be anything, shoot. It could be um, garbage bags. So now we have repairs and maintenance. Things break like you wouldn't believe. Most of my time is spent fixing things or solving problems. That's a role that whatever owner who wants to grow a business is going to have to accept. It's not always gonna be the fun part. So you have to be okay with a motor exploding and having oil <laughs> go everywhere and then replacing it or finding somebody who's able to help you with that. There's a lot of engineering involved that we're not talking about in this case, but um, repairs and maintenance. So we got it at 1.5%. And this is probably low only because we do so much ourselves. Advertising, I've never been a big fan of it. We do a lot of organic advertising. Uh, 
we kept this percentage the same across all lines for each year because it will grow. We're starting to play around with it more and it does prove to be effective. It feels a little dirty, but we're playing the game. We're trying to figure out if it's something we want to continue to do and it is proving to be effective as long as we're doing it in a way that we're comfortable with. So that's advertising for you. We do have it as an expense, $5,000 for the year. And this is for the Cookie Monster Chocolate Company at $1 million. Now, one of the things that you must do is include your car, your gas, um, deliveries of chocolate, because you're gonna want it as an expense. All of these are expenses. And if you don't take it as an expense, it's gonna show as profit at the end of the year that you're gonna pay taxes on. If you can get away with having it an expense, use your car and write it off. It doesn't make sense not to do this. I remember learning this the hard way in the beginning by making what felt like such a small, small amount of money the first couple of years of being in business and still having to pay taxes and, and having no money in my account. I was just so upset about that. So take your expenses, accept that there's not going to be any profit. You might have negative profit for the first few years, but understand where it's going. And this is what's going to tell you where it's going and make you okay with it. So you're either going to have it going to things like your car or your equipment, or you're going to pay more in taxes. And the game that your accountant is supposed to help you with is to pay less in taxes all within the legal lines. Rent. If you can get 10% or lower on your rent, you are doing a good job. So in this case, if your rent is $100,000 by the end of the year and you made a million dollars gross sales, you're doing okay. That's a decent percentage. Telephone. This could be not just your cell phone and your company phone, but maybe some of your employees' phones. So this is an expense that you can also pick up if it makes sense for your business. Utilities, electricity, chocolate's power hungry, 1.3%. We also have gas. We run propane for our machines. So we're constantly going up and filling um, propane tanks. Health insurance, no way around this. If someone works more than 20 hours um, per two weeks, you have to pick up their health care. So if you're going to pay somebody's health care, you better make sure they're working close to 40 hours a week. At least that's in the U.S. Temporary disability insurance, you can't get away from that either. Other insurance, general liability policy, etc. the amount of insurances will frustrate you. Don't look into this too much. Just pay it and close your eyes and accept that it's a significant expense. Interest, if you borrowed money, you're gonna to have to pay interest. Depreciation, this is something that we've almost always taken accelerated depreciation because you get to write more money off at the end of the year and it's worth posting a loss if you can take the accelerated depreciation on the equipment that you have purchased. Dues and subscriptions, if you're part of like we're part of Hawaii Food Manufacturers Association here in the state of Hawaii. We're part of the Hawaii Cacao Association, et cetera, et cetera. This is um, another expense that you can take, but it should be helping you in some way, whether it's marketing or discounts by your collaborative group efforts on getting um, FedEx discounts for shipping. Now, our last page here. We have entertainment. So if you take employees out to dinner, that's entertainment. If you, uh, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the main expenses that would happen for entertainment is going out to eat with your employees. Loan payments, oh, we also use it for buying alcohol and uh, wine and beer for our employees. It's good for morale. Loan payments, in this case, I don't have any here. I don't like loans. I try not to take them. This year, 2020, has been a little bit different. We did take every loan that we could get that the government was offering because the interest rates were really good. Gifts and promotions. So that's if you were to say one of your employees wants to go home and see their family. You buy them a gift. You buy somebody a, a card to go out to eat. They get a, uh, yeah, a, a gift in that way. So credit card and processing fees. If you're swiping someone's credit card, you are now paying fees. 
This is why it's better to swipe the card than to type in the number, by the way. You pay a lower fee. Licenses and fees, um, shoot, I don't even know what that would be for in our case. Postage and shipping, can't avoid that either. Printing expenses, can't avoid that. Storage, in our case for Manoa Chocolate, we have cacao that's stored in Oakland at East Bay Logistics. And we are unable to store all the beans ourselves. So this is a really nice service that they offer and it's fairly affordable. I recommend it. Samples, this is something that took us a few years to learn. Write off your samples. You're giving them away. You're not selling them. So if you're buying and making the chocolate and paying all the labor to do it, that's an expense and that's significant over the years. So in this case, 1.7%. And I know 1.7% doesn't sound like a lot, but $17,000 is a lot. So take the expense, if you can, for your samples if you give them away. In our case, we have a retail front. Our tasting room people come in and they're constantly trying chocolate and we constantly send samples out to wholesale accounts in order to incentivize them to try our product and hopefully carry it because they like it so that's samples trade shows this is our form of advertising I prefer this a lot more than paid advertising we paid oh gosh um, maybe like we, we, we tried a few different tactics where we were paying to <clears throat> be shown in hotels on the screen. When you check into a hotel, there's a TV and it'll show you things to do. We tried that here in Hawaii. We're always open to trying things once. Most of them don't work in the form of advertising. So you got to be really careful and ready for that. And in our case, we're constantly using a very small fraction of this budget to test that out. And in some things, it works really well, in others it doesn't. What we found is best are things like Groupon. And the irony here is Groupon pays us to advertise and sells our tours. So try and be creative like that. Travel, that kind of accompanies trade shows. All the travel I've done over the last five, six, whatever years has been for chocolate shows or chocolate machines. And that also kind of falls into that advertising realm. Now, and travel meals. Okay, so total yearly expenses were at 46%, $458,000. Our operating income is 0.53, is that right? Yeah, I'm terrible, really sad. <laughs> there's, there's no money left. So half of 1%, $11,000. Now we come into the very last segment of this three year projections. And this, by the way, guys, is what your financial statement also should show you every single month. Gains and loss on equipment sales. We have $16,000 in, say, potential equipment that might have been sold. That's 1.6%. Casualty loss, $17,000. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, our casualty loss for 2019 was $31,000 because we bought machines from two different parties that people did not deliver on and I'm not going to say their names here but this is something that happens and as an individual I'm very trusting until someone proves that they cannot be trusted you got to be really careful doing this I, I sent $31,000 for machines that I'm still waiting to see the machines and it's been years. So be super careful to do deposits and to have whatever you can and signed and written. Not that it matters too much, but it at least is a little more in writing, a little more substance and permanence when you have it committed like that because it really sucks to have that happen. And you know, there, there's just no way around it. It's gonna happen as your business grows. So I accept it at the moment. I'm still gonna follow up and do my best to either get the money back or get the machine that we already purchased. So no names at the moment. Uh, miscellaneous income, there's always random, difficult to, um, to, to say where it comes from type of income. And in this case, we've got, uh, the next one is reimbursements. Let's say that I went out and used, I, I didn't have the company credit card and I used my personal credit card and our employee used their personal credit card. We reimburse it because you don't want to pay taxes on a reimbursement. 
And then depreciation. Like I was talking about before, you always want to take as much accelerated depreciation as you can if you have profit. If you want to show profit. So then you have, uh, yeah, we've got a loss this year. And usually, if it's a loss, you got these little brackets around it. Brackets mean loss. And if you did it intentionally, it's okay. If you didn't, you need to reassess what you're doing. So in this case, because we took $42,000 of accelerated depreciation, you know, that, that's okay. We actually would have had a profit, but we didn't want to pay any taxes this year, so we took a loss that you can then carry over to the following year. Okay, yeah. 2021. Personally, I like growing by 40% a year. That's what we've been doing. And so we're going to do our best to keep doing that. If you grow by 40% a year, what I did here for all of this is I put in the percentages and had the percentage then tied into the gross sales. And I fixed this cell in an Excel spreadsheet and then it populated everything. So that's how I created the Excel spreadsheet for this Craft Chocolate TV episode. So 40% of retail sales is $560,000. That's what we're saying 2021 is. So, okay, okay, so we're saying that our wholesale grew significantly. We put a lot of effort in growing our local wholesale. Tourism has come back, yay, let's celebrate. We now went from $400,000 to $560,000 in wholesale. And your true growth potential for a chocolate company, for a manufacturer, is in wholesale and distribution because it's a volume game. You do a much better margin in your retail but as far as your ability to grow as a company and make an impact in the craft chocolate world, wholesale and distribution. So we're saying we now have lost 5% in retail and gained 5% in wholesale. And so we're at 560,000 for each. That's a very stable place to be. Distribution, we say we grew to 10% of our total sales is now distribution, 140 grand. Online is now 9%, which is the direction we're also pushing this year, 2020 has been rough. We're pushing hard on online because the entire United States is our market. We're also starting to sell more in Europe. And it's fun to be able to try and figure this out. They're all challenges and we're, take a look. If you're in Europe, you can order chocolate online from Manoa Chocolate. And we're actually sending pretty much everything from our collection to Europe to a, a friend of ours who's then taking care of all the shipping. So go ahead, order online. We'll see what happens. Now we've got our factory tours went from 2% to 1%. And we're saying our total revenues because we grew by 40% of gross sales, 1.4 million. Now the only thing that we're going to look at here that's really changed is we're trying to drop our costs of raw materials. We went from 11% to 10%, right? That's a good thing because you're saving a percentage point, and this is the area that you can more easily save money in. And you could be paying the same amount for everything, but getting, uh, you could be getting the same product, quality product, but you could be getting a better deal because you're purchasing larger quantities. So now we, let's see what's changed. Packaging costs might have also come down because you're buying larger quantities, right? If you buy like I said, 100,000 units, you're getting a better deal than if you buy 50,000 units. So now you've got 8%. Your number still went up from 100 to 112, but you saved two percentage points. Labor, hopefully you also saved a couple percentage points because you got a new piece of equipment. You got more efficient. You can always get better. You can always get faster. Um, payroll, can't do anything about that. Freight in. Yep, so this is nothing you can affect. Okay, let's flip the page. We're going to start going a little faster through here. Carson, you getting bored? <laughs> so if we kept the officer's salary the same, in this case that would be me, it would go from 40000 to 56000 percentage is the same. So that's good. As your total revenues grow, that percentage 
makes the dollar amount bigger. And you also have to keep it there so the IRS doesn't say, you're not making enough, you owe us more in taxes. Uh, admin salary also goes up, great. Everyone who's working hard to make the company grow deserves more money. And as Manoa Chocolate has grown, everyone has gotten paid more money. <sighs> Can't do anything about most of these, but you can see, let's see, let's go down to rent. Um, there we go. Rent shouldn't change that much. You still have the same space. Now in our case, every time we're growing significantly, 40% a year, you need a little more space here and there, mainly to store things. And so let's say you, in the building we're in now, there's an extra room and we're able to rent it. So our rent went up by about $12,000 a year, but check this out. We're at 8% instead of 10, even though we went up $12,000 for the year. So this is the kind of thing that you can do as you grow that you'll see affect your bottom line in a good way because you want that 2% in your profits so that you can reinvest in equipment, so that you can pay people more, so you can do what you do better. Um, let's see, telephone, so you, you shouldn't also be, your telephone expenses should have come down. So certain line items will have adjusted and look better. Oh, cacao moth. Uh, let's see, we're gonna skip most of this and go on to the last page. Du -du 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 -du. Credit card processing, licensing fees, postage and shipping, storage. So, as you grow, you'll tend to see trade shows. You're gonna wanna go to more of them because you're gonna have more product. You're gonna to have to figure out how to find more distributors. You're gonna to have to figure out how to sell more chocolate. Whatever way that is, trade shows are a good avenue in order to figure that out. Now we are going to look at, so look, we went from 46 to 44. We saved a few percentage points. And now we have $104,000. We have a 7.48% um, operating income. That's good. Okay, we're positive. Now, Gains and losses, gains and loss from equipment. Say we sold a few pieces of equipment we no longer need. Um, let's say somebody didn't pay us an account like, let, let's say an account we sold chocolate to, they didn't end up paying us. Believe it or not, this happens uh, more often than you'd like to believe. But we survive uh, miscellaneous income, reimbursements, and now depreciation. So total other income, we now have a net taxable income of $87,000. We have a 6.2% profit margin. So now, the next year, with the 40% growth, we're doing better. And we're going to look at our very last of the three-year projections. 2022. So we're saying we grew by 40% again, right? So we went from 1.4 to $1.96 million. And something to be very cognizant about is that when you're in between $500,000 and $5 million, you really want to get out of that category. You really want to break $5 million because the company will stabilize in a different kind of way because you're going to have a, a structure of people in place that can manage everything properly. It can be very difficult when you're in the in-between phase, whereas I am needed in, a, in an unpleasant way for the company's health and survival. As soon as I think you pass $5 million, you've got enough infrastructure and people infrastructure that you're not going to be meeting the founder in the same kind of way. And I'm speculating in some ways, but it's also from what I understand from talking to people who know a lot more than I do. So now let's look at this last one. Now we're dropping our percentage every single year, right? We want our retail to go down. I'm striving to always have our retail go down. Now I at this point have it still at, at $744,000 um, because I'm trying to maintain a company stability. So wholesale, I kept it also at the same, 744. We've got our distribution though that's growing. That's a nice target. 
We've got our online that's growing. That's good too, because the more online sales you do, the more stable you are because you're keeping your biggest margin. You don't even need a tasting room in order to do this. So now we've got factory tours at 1% still. So we've got almost $2 million of revenue. Not bad. Cost of raw materials has also come down. We got it down to 9%. And this is more of a target. And this is very achievable. This should be one of the goals. You don't want to pay the people you buy beans from less, but you want to hit their, minim their, their minimums in order to get the best deal. And that could mean collaborating with other chocolate makers. Like we work with a number of other chocolate makers to buy sugar in a collaborative effort so that we all get the best deal. And the same can go for beans. I haven't seen it happen too much yet, but it should. Cost of goods for retail. We have a retail store, so we got that still. Packaging costs, we've, uh, we're still at 8% here because it's really hard if you're buying super nice packaging to get lower. And we will as our unit prices, uh, as our, our orders go from say 100,000 to 500,000 or a million. You definitely start to see much better deals and we're not there yet. Now, payroll, so, so look, we've got 25%, 23%, 22%. You really want to get below 20% because you want the machines doing more of the work because no one really wants to stand there and make chocolate and mold for eight hours every single day, I promise you. It's a burnout. And no one really wants to package chocolate bars, hand package them. That's also a burnout. You want people running the machines, making sure it works, demolding the pans, making sure that it's labeled properly, things that humans truly need to do. And eventually you can automate a lot of that as well. But at our craft chocolate scales, we're not gonna be there for a while. It is a goal though. We can still make amazing chocolate and that's the main goal and grow a craft chocolate industry that's making the best chocolate and cacao in the world from the, making the best chocolate from the best cacao because that's the, the true difficulty is growing the best chocolate and also to have it all slave free. There's that sad underbelly of the chocolate world that we don't talk about that much. We are always focused on slave free chocolate just like the rest of the craft chocolate industry. So you know you don't want to pay people such a small amount that this is you know 5% or 3% like the bigger companies would do because they know that instead of paying $7 a kilo or $8 a kilo, $6.50 a kilo, whatever it is, they can pay commodity rates of $2.25. That is slave labor from everything we can understand. And so I'm not gonna go into it too much more than that. Let's go into the very last page and we're gonna wrap up here. Uh, but you can see that things like the rent, we're now down to 7%. If you hit 7% in your rent, you're doing great. You're stoked because we still have it go from $100,000 at 10% to 112000 at 8%, $137,000 at 7%. Because your gross revenues have gone up, it doesn't matter. Your percentage is still going lower and your rent's gone higher because you potentially needed more space mainly for storing your packaging and your raw materials like your beans and cocoa butter and sugar. So now we're gonna look at uh, the bottom line. Let's skip all the way down to the bottom line. And we are now, okay, so see now we're at our operating, our, our yearly expenses are at 43%, which is, guys, that, that's still kind of on the high side. $206,000 of operating income at 10.5%. And then we are going to look all the way down to net taxable income. We've got $148,000 of taxable profit at 7.6%. You really wanna be closer to 15 to 20. And this is skewed because of things like depreciation. So, it's an accounting game, like I was saying before, but this must be looked at if you are going to successfully grow a chocolate business. Not just a chocolate business, any business. 
And if you don't like doing it, find somebody who does because you can't ignore it. It's too important. This has been another episode of Craft Chocolate TV. I'll see you next time. Cheers.